These are the manatees of Belize. They are known as the cows of the sea. Chubby, grass munching, and slow, they live quietly in the warm, shallow waters of these pristine aquatic ecosystems. Marine conservationist Jamal Galvez has dedicated his life to protecting them. What are you seeing? So usually I look around for a mud print. And I can see there's a mud print right there. When they're feeding, they tend to stir up a lot of mud because they're eating the grass. <laughs> COVID meant these guys got a tourist for a year and they've been living their best lives. It's right in front of the boat, right, right there, right there. In front oh, yeah, of the boat. yeah. Wow. Seagrass are much healthier in shallow waters um, due to the sunlight being able to access the plants. Um, they're healthier, lusher. Um, and these are habitats that have been known for this for many years. But now, as travel restrictions are lifted and crowds start to return, their existence is in danger once again. Right here is the dredger. Yeah, right here is the dredge. They're taking away the sediment, making it deeper so that we can, so that they can accommodate large boats and cruise ships. The number of Antillean manatees killed by human error more than halved after the cruise industry went on a 16-month hiatus. Mothers have had a chance to raise their calves in peace. But the ships are coming back, and the government is pushing for a return to mass tourism. Marine conservationists warn that the time is running out to prevent the number of dead manatees from scaling up again. We've seen an Antilles death rate increase every year. Just like tourism numbers go up, manatee death rates follows it, follows behind. What are the numbers? In 2019, there was about 49 manatee reports that came in. Um, deaths. Deaths. And in 2020, when COVID-19 came, we saw a drastic decrease. We were in the teens in 2020. Galvez has been taking care of manatees since he was 11 years old. He is known as the Manatee Man. So what are the biggest risks to manatees? Majority of manatees that die are as a result of watercraft collision. Threats including um, entanglement in fishing gears, and garbage pollution, destruction of coastal habitat, people tearing down the mangroves. Talk to me about the boat collisions. How does that happen? A majority of the boat collision happens in shallow waters. Manatees tend to feed and hang out in shallow waters. But if you're, if you're in a water some three feet deep and the engine goes down two feet, manatee has no space between the floor the ocean floor and the boat to get away. And these animals are slow. I mean, they get hit because people are just speeding through without looking. All right. I've observed myself, boats come in the morning, do a manatee tour, they enjoy the manatee tour, they come very slowly, they go up the river. In the afternoon, they come back full speed. Forgot that they just left 20 manatees there that they just did a tour for. Not thinking about tomorrow, not thinking about 20 years from now, just thinking about making that book right now. They get hit, oftentimes go unreported. Um, if you report it, we were able to come out to see if we can assist, perhaps we can save the animal, but if it's left out there to bleed, it's a cruel. It might sound like a simple fix, protect the manatees, but the country is in dire need of revenue. Belize was already considering an International Monetary Fund austerity plan when COVID hit, clobbering the tourism industry, representing 42% of its GDP. Now, the country cannot pay its bills. When we met with the prime minister, he was dealing with weekly protests by angry civil servants. Um, this is the first time in the history of Belize that um, the salaries of the teachers and the public service is being cut. Unfortunately for Belize, um, we were already in a recession even before um, COVID. Our unemployment rate has gone up to, um, to over 30% and um, the underemployment also has gone up considerably. With this, all this frustration, what is it like right now for the future of the country, for the industries to come back? The best social program that the government can give is to create jobs for people. People want to work. At what point do you prioritize the economy and the growth versus the natural state of the environment that people do want protected, that you say does draw people? We have laws enacted to ensure that they, we keep the highest environmental standards um, so that people can come and invest and know fully what they can do and what they cannot do. 
Some of the conservationists that we've talked to have said, though, that the problem is now that things are so desperate and so harsh that those safeguards are weaker than before. They're worried. That's that absolutely they're not true. I think that they're talking nonsense. I can give you my assurance as the prime minister of this country that I would not allow that to happen. We have to protect this environment. But some of the worries, I think, are that the point is now that the expansion, any expansion, would interrupt the conservation act. Yes, I mean, and we always understand that we have to protect the environment, but it does not mean that we're not going to try to attract investments. That is something that is absolutely necessary and the responsibility of any government. We were granted access to the Stake Bank cruise port that Galvez had shown us. We're gonna have some office space for our staff in the front here. And then to the end there, that's gonna be a huge family beach with lots of huts over the water, restaurants, bars. This project is owned by the Feinstein family, one of the largest business owners in the country. You know, when this project is complete, you're looking at three, 4,000 jobs indirectly, and that trickle-down effect is gonna benefit maybe about 10,000 households. How are you trying to minimize the impact and what have you heard about its effect here? Well, out here we have very, very, very minimal environmental impact. As you can see, all the material from our dredging goes, 100% of it goes on the island. But we're, we're literally standing on dredged coral. I mean, this is the seabed that is being pulled yeah, up. Yeah, but this is all dead coral. This is dead coral. This has all been dead coral. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could dive to the bottom of the ocean and pick it up. But at the end of the day, with all that expansion, eventually will come boat strikes on manatees, destructions of the reefs, more and more people pumping in will cause more and more problems. At what point is that worth it? Well, we don't know that that's, that's, that's gonna be the case, you know, only time will tell, but like I said, everyone has to do their part. With this, this cruise port, we don't need anything else in the country. This is perfect for, for, for Belize. We're not overdoing it. Uh, I know there's a couple other cruise ports on the table. Now that's a disaster. What you're saying is that Four would be bad, but one would be good. And what we're hearing is that none would be best. Yeah, but we, the country needs us, you know? The country needs, this is what our country needs. Our Belize is gonna lose its, its, its cruise industry. You know, the cruise lines have made it very clear for years and years, actually, they've been telling the government that we need a, a, a dry dock. We can't come, be coming here and, and dropping our anchor. We need a dry dock. And so that's what we have done. We have, you know, this is a private entity and we have secured the future. Cruise tourism is, is, is critical, critical for Belize. We've seen it um, as it gone from COVID-19. Why is it critical? It's a significant part of our e income. It contributes significantly to our economy. It pays a lot of people. It, it helps to, for kids, for people to put food on their tables. So I feel for them, but in my opinion, if an ecosystem collapses, an economy will die much faster than COVID have killed it. Nobody can come and buy this. This is put here by God and it's just natural. Let's be the leader. We don't need to follow Mexico or follow any other massive um, cruise ship port destination. Let's do it our way. Belize has the last stronghold of the Antillian Manantis in the world. If we don't do enough to save the species, it will likely go extinct 